Offensive line coach, Matt Moore. Questions for Coach Moore, Greg? So Matt, let's start with the basics of, I mean, he lost a couple of really good players from last year. You know, re rebuilding this group, a lot of rebuilding, you still got uh, a lot of veterans there, but what's the rebuild look like to this point? <coughs> you know, it's uh, you know, it's always hard when you when you lose two guys that are leaders. Uh, you know, but but I think uh, these guys are doing a really good job stepping up. Uh, White Milam and Yates and uh, and Malone and Hubbard are doing a really good job stepping up. They've had a great off season. Uh, have really set the standard in the weight room, just like we did before with with uh, Frazier. You know, he he did a really he did a really good job setting that tone for this team. I just, just saw him in the uh, cafeteria right there. Uh, but you know, it's it's one of those things where you know. I had seven guys that started last year, and I got five of those seven back. So we're still a veteran group as far as knowing what to do. I got guys that can play multiple positions. Yates can play every position out there. He's doing a really good job at center. So uh, I don't see it as much as a rebuild as I expect it to be a reload. And that's that's the way I'm talking to him. I was like, hey, we're not rebuilding this thing. We're going to keep, you know, obviously you lose a, you know, two really good players, but we're still, we, we still got good players. So I expect – the level of play to stay where it is. Maybe a little different style of play, but I expect the level to stay where it is. You mentioned Frazier. Um, <clears throat> what do you tell Brandon Yates? Is it Brandon, you be Brandon Yates? How, yeah, how do you for sure. About that? Yeah, go be, go be you. I mean, you know, there's some things that Yates does that's better than what Frazier did, you know? You know, he's, he's not quite as powerful and the wrestler and the grappler, but, you know, he's very athletic. He can really run. So, there's some things that he does better than what Frazier did, and I don't I don't compare the films. I don't pull them out and say, hey, this is the way Frazier did it. But there's some technique and fundamental things that Frazier did a great job of, and he's learned from that. He embraces it. He knows that he's uh, filling some big shoes, but he's ready to do it. You know, he did it in the bowl game, did a good job. So he's had a really good spring so far. Take us through the uh, process of creating a center out of him. Uh, well, <clears throat> he's he's built like a center. Uh, and he's very cerebral, so that's that makes the job much easier. Uh, he's he's a really smart player, and for him to play, he played spring. If y'all remember, Frazier was hurt last spring, so Yates played the start and center all spring long. So having that, all of those reps from those 15 practices, and then all season long, he was the backup center. So he was getting reps at center all season long. So it's not like I'm taking a guy that's never played the position and putting him there. He he had already had a you know, a lot of reps there, so he's uh, from a from a mental standpoint, he's done a really good job of making the front calls, making the mic calls, and really just teaching him to take his preparation a step further, because that's what all centers have to do, just like a quarterback. You got to be here before everybody. You got to stay after everybody. You got to make sure you understand what we're seeing. You got to understand and know what the uh, giveaways are for the defense. So that's the part I've got to teach him more than anything. On the idea of splitting time there, and what is the hardest thing that's been for him to pick up? You're talking about splitting time last year there? Yeah, last year, yeah, last year, and you know, possibly being the a right a center rather than where he had been. No, you know, he's really as far as playing on the next level is an easy sell because that's what he's going to be. You talk to NFL guys that come in here, they look at him, they go, "Hey, man, he looks like a center." So it's a pretty easy sell. Like, "Hey, man." This is where you need to be. So the cell was not cell job wasn't hard at all. And you know he he's like most of my guys. He just wants to play. He if you put him back out at left tackle, you know where he played for two years, he would do that. So he just wants to play ball. Um, he wants to win. He wants to compete. Brandon mentioned um, in the Baylor game last year the situation that came up where Zach got hurt and he came in. You guys actually practiced that. That's yeah. pretty specific to do. Talk yeah. About that a little bit. Well, it was <clears throat> so all year long he was the backup center. So we would be practicing, and they would rotate during practice every three plays. He would play three plays at guard, three plays at center, and have three plays off. So every team session, he was going guard, center, out, guard, center, out. So I was constantly working where he was running in there, you know, in the middle of a play like that, where he'd stand back there with me, and he knew on his third rep he was going to go to center for three, guard to three, out three. So that's the way it worked out, but that's the way I rotate most of my guys. It just – it. It, just the way it, it worked out, that it was in the mid, middle of a drive, he had to go in there. Well, he was, said he was standing, he was in pro protocol, he was standing down there and he saw Zach hopping, limping, and he, his training kicked in right away. He said, I got to get there. Yep. Yeah. Now, now Hubs went running on the field, moved him over, and there we went, you know. 
So oh, it worked. worked. It worked. It worked out for you. Seemed like a genius right now, right? <laughs> it's been the other way a couple times before, too. Yeah. Who do you think, uh, or I guess who's in the mix for backup center this year? You know, Landon Livingston is doing a really nice job right now. He's really a uh, very coachable kid. He's playing with really good technique. He's battling. Um, strength has always been where he's got to catch up. He's starting to catch up with that. He's a really athletic kid. Uh, Cooper is doing a really good job at center. Um, I've got White Milam snapping. Uh, you know, uh, he could he could play center. I've got Malone snapping. He could, I'm just – I'm really – I try to have – an answer at center because that's the position. If you don't have somebody ready, man, you could really get in trouble if you have two guys go down. So I try to have four people that I know can play, able to snap, make calls, and do those things. But right now, it's Landon and Cooper are the two guys that are that are backing up center. What can you do with a guy like Remack right now since he's <clears> in the red jersey? Do you work around that, or do you? Or no, I can right now until he gets released, I can't do anything. Okay. He's completely on the side until they release him. He's on the side. He's watching. Uh, you know, the trainers take him out. They run him. I mean, they get a workout every day. It's just they don't really want him around people and changing directions with bodies and feet to step on and all that. So and what do you do in that place? Obviously, you're developing <laughs> depth with him out right now. Yeah, you know, uh, Sully, Sully Weeman's there right now. Uh, and I got Mo behind him. And then I got Cooper is also playing center and left guard. So I got those three guys working right now at the left guard spot. Uh, Sully probably had his best day of the, of the spring so far. Um, you know, he's a guy that can do it. He's just got to continue to get reps and settle down to play within himself. But he's a physically, you know, he's a 6'4", 320 kid that can move. So once he gets enough reps, he'll be a good, he'll be a good solid player out there for us. And what about Johnny Williams? <clears throat> Johnny Williams had a great spring. I'm trying to leave him at tackle because he's still a freshman. I can move him to one of the guard spots. Uh, but he could play left tackle and right tackle right now. So I'm really excited about what he's doing. He's got to continue to develop his body. You know, he's one of those kids that during high school, he didn't have much of a weight room, didn't lift much, and then now he's really starting to come around, get his body where he needs to, where he can compete. Start him at right, and then eventually he's probably a left. Is that what he? Well, no, he's left. He's backing up Wyatt right okay. now, left tackle, All right. and he's doing a really good job. But he can play right. He can go over there and get some reps at right. So he he can be a guy that can swing back and forth for me. Uh, you know, Xavier Balsley's coming in at right tackle. He's doing a really good job behind Malone. Learning really quickly, um, you know, got to continue to work on his strength, but he's really athletic. He moves really well. So excited about him on the right side at right tackle. So I hadn't had to move Johnny because I felt like I got too deep at both tackles. Sir, <clears throat> when you're looking for guys that can play center, I'm sure, you know, hey, did you do it in high school? But then do you run everybody else through a couple of snap sequences or whatever to see who might be able to have yeah, a shot? Yeah, I mean, I, I, Tomas has gone in there, can't snap, done. You know, Sully, I put him in there, can't snap, done. So we try to get everybody, like, if you can snap at all and you can move and you're – I we just do some things pre-practice and stuff where it's a great time to get snaps and get some confidence in it. And, like, why Milam, who knows? I mean, he's, he can snap. He's, he's a baseball kid. He may be a center when he goes to the ne center guard tackle. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I make sure when my guys come through here, when they leave, I want them to play as many positions as they can to help sell themselves on the next level. If they're not a, you know, a tier one, you know, high draft pick guy, they want to be a guy that can go to a camp and get plugged in at guard, tackle, center, and give themselves a chance to hang on. Is there anybody who's going to be this year is Nick Malone, who's probably good enough to start and just needs the opportunity? Yeah, Nick Cray's one of those guys. He, Nick Cray's doing a phenomenal job at right guard right now. He played right tackle all last year, or I say all last year, all during the, his redshirt year, played right tackle. I moved him to guard. He's he, the kid played high school football at 245. He's 305 now, and I don't know if y'all seen him, but like he's a good looking dude. Like he's he's there's no fat on him. He's a basketball player. He's a he's a guy that had uh, double double. I think 90 percent of his games. He's athletic. He's really coming on at the right guard spot. And, you know, he could be the guy that's our Nick Malone, uh, big tight end, also can play right tackle, right guard. Uh, so uh, I think he's one of those guys. He uh, really exciting to watch how he's playing and how he's developing. Just from the names that you're mentioning, it sounds like you're pretty close to two at each spot. That's and I've got you know I've got seven guys coming in, you know. So so we're going to be sitting right around 1920, and, and so I'm excited about what we got coming into the room and trying to fill this thing. But it's just it's really hard with the transfer portal. If you look at, I got three guys right now that were all here that are starting at. 
you know, one starting at a power five school and two of them are really good players at group of five. And they're good players. But they were ready to play last year and they couldn't they couldn't win it. But that's what you get with the, with the portal now. If these – used to – you guys remember the days where you had redshirt juniors, like, hey, who is this kid? Oh, he signed three years ago and he's just now starting. You don't see that much. You know, redshirt sophomore, if they're not starting, you know, they're, somebody needs them. It's hard to find those big fellas, you know. But we're just – you know, Mike Joseph does a great job of developing these guys in the weight room. And we do – we work really hard to develop them from a football standpoint. And, uh, you know, as long as we continue to have – those older guys in the front of the room, you know, after this year, I'm losing four, so we're kind of restarting a little bit after this year. How about, um, how's Jaquay done? Because I think this is probably going to be the first time where he really has a, a spot that's his and, and you know, yeah, J- his alone. Yeah, he's always been a guy that's battling. Um, he's had a had a really good spring, had a great off season. Got it. He's really getting his body in shape, and, and Jaquay works as hard as, if not harder than anybody in the building. That kid, he works really hard, um, and he is continuing to grow as a player. He's got some deficiencies, and he knows it, and he's got to continue to uh, make sure he, he plays to those de- – plays and covers up those deficiencies and, and gets better at it. But he's he's had a good – he's a big, long kid. He, he moves pretty good. So, uh, we're, we're continuing to push him to, to get those deficiencies lower and lower. Let me ask you a question. Because Shadon mentioned this about culture. I mean, he's mentioned that there's been Is he some... philosophizing in here? Well, a little bit. He was talking about You got to cut it off. He can't do Well, he was talking about the portal and how there was some players that he really liked that Neil said, nah, they're not going to fit us. They're not going to fit our culture. You've been with Neil as long as anybody. Where does that come from, from him? And, and where did that value come from having a good locker room and a good culture above just having good players on your team? Well, it was a lot of times as a coach, that's, uh, you learn that lesson the hard way. You know, you go in somewhere and you say, he's a really good player, but he's, you know, he's probably not what we're looking for as far as culture. And you keep him. And then, man, you realize, gosh, you know, a year later, like, man, I should have, we, we should have cut. So I think that's what he's learned as he's become, you know, becoming a head coach, getting older and older about being a head coach. I, I think he's learned that, like, hey, maybe this guy's not quite as fast or quite as tall, but he's going to work harder. He's going to be the culture we want. Let's go with that guy. And that's what we've got right now going is we got we got a good really good culture in, in my room on our offense. We got a really good culture of of kids that get here early, do what they're supposed to do, handle their grades, handle their school. You're not running around chasing people to do what they're supposed to do. And that's you know you'll win ball games just off that, even though you may not be quite as talented as you could be, but you'll win ball games just because you know those they're going they're going to do what they're supposed to do. You know what you're going to get out of them when you put them out there. kind of quiet and just unassuming of his role. Do you kind of see a similarity with Wyatt and how he kind of just isn't the most noticed person on this offensive line, but he kind of is just does his job every time? Yeah, uh, so so Wyatt has, is really starting to come out of a shell. He's always been a real shy, humble, unassuming kid, and he's really starting to come out of a shell this offseason because, you know, with Frazier and Doug leaving, because Doug was kind of the mouthpiece. Frazier was the – Hey, what, look what he's doing, guy. And Doug was the guy that would always call BS, BS, and call people out and keep them in line. That's, that's just who he is. And now Wyatt's learned from both of them where he's doing a little bit of both now. And, you know, he's also got, you know, Malone and Jaquay and, and Yates that are also – they're not going to – you know, those guys are all seeing how it's done, and they're trying to do the same thing as far as, you know, you got a young guy not doing what he's supposed to do or even – an older guy, they're going to call it out. And so Wyatt's really come out of his shell a little bit and from a leadership standpoint, doing a much better job. Matt, your own patience <clears throat> through the first few years of, of growing this thing, how, how difficult was that? Did, did you know there was going to be a light at the end of the tunnel when you were a coach or at some point you go, oh, boy, this, this is Well, I knew, I knew uh, you know, once when, when, we, when we signed Wyatt, I mean, when we signed Frazier and then we signed Wyatt and we signed Tomas, I feel like, okay, we just – these guys are what we're looking for. These are the guys we're looking for. And, and you know, when Frazier showed up during the COVID and, and he's out there working, and now I'm like, okay, I got somebody I can point at. Look, guys, that's the way it's done. And then even some of the older guys, like Chase Barrett and those guys, they were better their, their year after spending a year with Frazier because they literally watched him work and said, oh, I didn't, I didn't know you could do it. I, I never seen anybody do it like that, you know. And, and that's – he really turned this program around – from the center position, from the O-line position, 
uh, especially my room with, with just his mentality and how he approaches things. And he's not, like you said, he's not a, he's not an overbearing guy. He's just, you go, Hey, do it like him. Look at him. He's here. He's a freshman all American. You want to be good? Talk about being good or do it the way he does it. You know? So that's, and now I got like Johnny Williams, Wyatt's, you know, Wyatt gets here before 6 a.m. on practice days, two hours before he has to and gets his body ready, uh, you know, eats, uh, fuels his body, does some rehab. I mean, that's – and the other guys see him doing that, and that's that's how you build that culture. Anybody else? Thanks, Coach. We're good. Thanks, guys.